Now I would like to welcome Ken Hayes, Executive Director of the Clean Tech Open. As I said, the Clean Tech Open is the largest clean tech accelerator in the world that and has been accelerating companies from Asia to Europe. Um, but I believe it originally started right here in the Golden State. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let Ken Hayes take over. Thank you so much, so much uh, Thomas. And uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, and also uh, Soraya for the for the help and the invitation to be here today. I really appreciate that. It's good to see some familiar names in the audience um, as well. Uh, we also I'd also like to introduce Ryan Hoover, who is on the line, is our operations manager, uh, newly promoted and in that role uh, here from the beginning of the year, covering California, and um, and and a lot of the CalSeed uh, work that we do. A partnership with them, and also Stan Tomsick, who is our Metro Director from Los Angeles. I happen to be based in LA, but uh, Thomas is right. Clean Tech Open really started in the Bay Area in 2005, uh, kind of in parallel with a comparable organization out of Massachusetts through the MIT Ignite Clean Energy Program, and uh, then we ended up merging. So I am the Executive Director of the national organization, and it's this is my first time really kind of getting around to all of the our partner organizations in around California, uh, organizations like yours at Clean Start, and I very much appreciate that, uh, that op the opportunity and thank you for being a great uh, positive partner in the ecosystem because like Thomas said, we got to keep this economy going, we got to keep it running and growing, and that this is really a big part of Clean Tech Open's uh, mission. So. I was hoping to spend about uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, uh, go through some, some of the slides and kind of give an update on where Cleantech Open is here in 2021. Um, and if there's any questions, please put them in the, please put them in the chat and, and I'm sure Thomas or Ryan are, will, let, will let me know uh, to keep, uh, keep an eye on it. So Cleantech Open's mission is really to find, fund and foster entrepreneurs with big ideas that address today's most urgent energy environmental economic challenges. It's a big mission. The way I boil it down, I come out of venture capital. I'm a recovering entrepreneur. I don't have a background in, in energy or, or clean tech as such, but here in the, in the second half of my, my career life, I've kind of seen the light that I really uh, desire to, to help make the world a better place. And, and kind of the way I see this mission and the way we've kind of changed our, our emphasis is we're creating success for the environment and business. We're a pro-business accelerator. Uh, and it used to be you could be an environmentalist, you could be a business person, but those two things were not compatible. But, but actually, the truth is those really can be compatible and intertwined. And that's what we do in Clean Tech Open. We help entrepreneurs with great uh, innovations in the environment become successful business people. We are, as Thomas said, we're, we're the world's largest clean technology, uh, clean technology accelerator. Uh, we've been online in 2020, and we will be again here in 2021 because of the pandemic. We are, and, and some of you who've worked with us in the past know that we would typically hold 100 events a year kind of around the country, including the Global Forum and all that. We're still doing that, but it's now it's all online. And I think we've had such good success with it in 2020 that even after the pandemic, we're gonna run, continue to run a significant portion of our program online and, um, and, uh, and continue in a hybrid type model. We are a nonprofit organization. We are actually a project or a program of community partners in Los Angeles. We're, uh, we used to be an independent 501c3, but we're now part of a larger 501c3. They handle all of our back office, HR, everything is fantastic, contracts, uh, the whole bit. It's been a huge relief. We can concentrate on the program and our entrepreneurs. Uh, we have about 100 companies a year nationally that will go through the program, about 1,000 volunteers who are around, around the country working with us and regions around the country. And we culminate everything each year at the Global Forum event. Uh, typically, it's been in the Bay Area. The last few years, it was in Los Angeles. Uh, this past October, it was online. And we had, remind me if I'm wrong, Ryan, I think we had people from 22 countries and over 430 people uh, participate. So it was a, um, it was a big, it was a big event. For those of you out there that are entrepreneurs and considering a program like the Clean Tech Open, 
it's very important to understand the stage and the kind of company we we work best with. And we work with early stage companies. Typically, they're in the pilot stage. They're typically pre-revenue. They're getting ready to go out to raise a seed seed round uh, for equity. Maybe they're beginning to talk to angels. And so we're, we help those companies at that stage. That's our sweet spot. If you've already raised $10 million in a Series A, uh, let the VCs uh, guide you and uh, you're, be, you're too far for clean tech open. And likewise, if you're in the university and doing grants and research, we would be a good next step uh, after that. We work, we, we define clean tech quite broadly. And um, so, you know, there's accelerators for water and, and carbon and things, but we actually are quite inclusive of, of clean tech because a lot of technologies cross several of these categories, but um, energy is the largest, uh, green building, transportation are significant. Interestingly, ag, water, and waste are the, is the fastest growing sector in clean tech open. There's a lot of innovation going on in, in that area and from water treatment to innovative agriculture, growing methods, things like that. We have a partnership with the Danforth um, um, Agriculture Center out of, uh, in the Midwest, for example, through IN2. Chemicals, advanced materials, and then information technology communications, including IoT. So, you know, if it's a water treatment uh, program, uh, uh, hardware that uh, so is solar powered, you know, it covers several categories. About 85% of the companies are hardware based and typically deep, you know, really intense uh, hardware it requires a lot of validation. We're considered a feeder for the US uh, clean tech commercialization ecosystem. So, we are a founding partner of the Incubate Energy Network, which is run by EPRI, uh, the Electric Power Research uh, Institute, which includes you know, these uh, uh, incubators like Lacey and uh, Elemental and others. And we work with all of them. We're agnostic to, to all of those partners. We work well with everybody because we want our alumni to be successful in follow-on areas. Um, we work with incubators and demonstration programs here in California, and we're part of the California Energy Commission's energy clusters, primarily working with uh, CalSeed, New Energy, New Energy Nexus, and then with the regional regional partners, including Blue Tech Valley, which I know you guys also work with, uh, work with a lot. As I mentioned, we're around the country. We're a network of networks and you know, organizations like yours, which really build a good solid network in a, in a regional area, we would be considered vis-a-vis -vis you all as kind of a, like a window to the world for entrepreneurs that are looking to meet uh, mentors or investors or, or partners kind of beyond their, their local region. Not necessarily to move there, but to, but to partner with them or, or as uh, to be customers of. So within Clean Tech Open, our accelerator starts in June and goes through October. And the key activities that people get in Clean Tech Open are training through a curriculum uh, and workshops and our national academy and just a lot of intensive uh, work with uh, the curriculum that we've developed over the years. A lot of it is based, uh, I'll, I'll show you this in a moment, but is based on the lean startup uh, methodology and the business model canvas. Those of you that might have been part of i from the National Science Foundation or know Steve Blank from Recording Berkeley, in progress. Um, Berkeley would know that um, uh, you know, this is the same methodology and, and very popular and effective. The second pillar of our activities is the mentoring, uh, where we match uh, one to four mentors to each entrepreneur in the course of the accelerator. The mentors are really the guide and the Sherpa for the entrepreneur. And when entrepreneurs build up trust with their mentor, the mentors are usually pretty good about opening up their Rolodex, making introductions uh, in the industry, things like that. Clean Tech Open, the third pillar is access to capital. We are not a fund. We do not, we do not put cash directly into companies, although we have competitions and they can win cash prizes, but we really make introductions to capital and through the showcasing. We run Investor Connect events, uh, some of you may have attended those in the past, uh, which is basically speed dating between entrepreneurs and investors. We did this online in October, uh, where we had where we organized 550 
one-on-one -on -one meetings over a three-day period in Zoom. And uh, Ryan was one of the one of our uh, operations people that ran that. It was crazy, but it turned out to be fun and super effective. And then the fourth pillar of Clean Tech Open is showcasing. We want to make sure that all of the companies going through our program get exposure to the world at large, to the to the ecosystem, and to partners. And we do that by doing a lot of promotion. We have a um, 27,000 uh, member mailing list and a lot of social media activities. And so we really try to get the word out on our companies. And what the companies actually do when they're in the accelerator is beside, as they go through the modules, they, they do work uh, product. And the, the result of that are these eight essential business deliverables. And you know, you, this is not rocket science, let's be honest, you know, doing a customer segmentation. But the process of thinking through that, working with the mentors, doing 100 customer discovery interviews, things like that, really help the entrepreneurs solidify their business strategy and at least where they're heading and what they need to do next. And as we say in the tagline here at the bottom, you'll need these for any funding initiative. So whether you're going to do due diligence with an angel group or others, you're going to have to be providing a lot of this material uh, anyways. I mentioned the mentors, and some of you may have actually been a mentor in, in Clean Tech Open. We would love to have more mentors. The We have two kinds. We have generalist mentors who are kind of like the lead, uh, typically have a lot of uh, business general business experience, and, and they kind of co they coach the entrepreneurs. They don't do the work of the entrepreneurs. That's important to note. Uh, they don't give official advice or anything, but they are, they're the guide uh, through the program and a sounding board and a sparring partner for the entrepreneurs. And then we also have specialist mentors who are typically subject matter experts. It's amazing, you know, when we were able to hook up a, a, an energy tech company from uh, North Dakota with, uh, en with an engineer from uh, Pacific Gas Electric, you know, to make that connection across the country and and help that help that entrepreneur become successful, they have actually um, have done really well since. So, you know, any kind of mentor mentor initiative uh, activities, we are we are very supportive of, and we help our mentors uh, train in that regard. Of course, we also try to match mentors that are that are geographically local. So, if you have companies in kind of the greater Sacramento area that join Clean Tech Open. And you have mentors that would like to mentor Clean Tech Open. We prefer to match mentors locally, uh, at least one out of the four mentors on the team, so that that entrepreneur has a local connection to the local ecosystem. Maybe it's a maybe it's a lawyer, an accountant, or or another executive. So we want to we want the companies to build relationships locally as well as build those relationships nationally that are relevant for them. You know, a few we have a few we have a lot of alumni of of, of note, but um, you know, I try to update this uh, this list on a frequent basis. You can actually we actually started a hashtag called uh, CTO Alumni Success because people are always asking me what are alumni doing, and we have eighteen hundred alumni, and I can't keep track of all of them. But um, I put a couple here. Uh, this announcement from Block Power, this is a company in Brooklyn, just raised sixty three million dollars. It was announced about uh, ten days ago as it was an $8 million Series A and then $55 million in guaranteed uh, funding uh, for retrofitting uh, urban, urban buildings, residential buildings, um, and uh, doing great. Arkimoto three-wheeled electric car here in Southern California, you know, did a uh, crowdfund uh, equity crowd raise. One of the first uh, here in September 2017 raised $18 million. They're actually now worth about six hundred million dollars. So those 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 investors did pretty well. Um, one one of my favorites is also very recent. Uh, this was on the on the premiere episode of Shark Tank here in uh, I guess it was um, I think it was in October, late October. Uh, this is a twenty sixteen alum uh, that ended up that has a portable battery pack that you can carry around with you in your car in case of emergencies or you run out. They actually did a $1 million deal on Shark Tank with Mark Cuban and Lori Greiner. And um, they are both a Lacey company in Los Angeles, as well as a Greentown Labs company, and have gone on to successfully raise funding from VC. So, you know, 
all of us, you all out in the audience, you know, we know that clean tech is not the most sexy public industry. Uh, it's actually becoming more popular. And when one of our companies gets on national TV, it's, uh, you know, that's a big point of pride and also shows that our sector of clean technologies, energy tech is becoming, is rising in the public consciousness. And I think that's, uh, that's only, that only bodes well for the future of, uh, of this industry. We, we started, uh, we do track our effectiveness. Uh, this chart is from the Northeast where we did the first pilot investigation or deep, deep research of our companies. Uh, and we're rolling that out and doing it in other parts of the country. We'll be doing California here later this year where in the Northeast, you know, 414 companies have gone through the program in 15 years and 68% of them are still, you know, operating in existence, which is a remarkable survival rate for, uh, startups is typically about 25%. And to me, what's also key is those companies have gone on to raise over $650 million in, um, in funding after Cleantech Open. And we are also on a strong uh, uh, movement to increase the diversity of our entrepreneur base and our mentor base. And you can see this progression. This was just in the Northeast, but teams that ha were led by a a woman and or a person of uh, color have increased from 47% to 63%. This is not just you have a woman on your team. This is, is the CEO founder uh, a woman or, or person of color? And um, so we want to continue that trend and we want to make Cleantech Open available to as many entrepreneurs as, as possible. A lot of accelerators will start by having a, a huge search and pipeline, they select 10 companies to go through their accelerator. We do it differently. We take 100 companies through the accelerator. So 100 entrepreneurs learn how to become better business people. And then we have a competition at the end to find out, okay, who are the 10, who are the 10 best companies at the end? They can win the cash prizes. But in the meantime, 100 entrepreneurs um, gain the knowledge. I'm not going to go into depth on the program timeline, except our application phase is open from now until April 18th. And then the program runs from uh, May through September. And then our global forum it will happen October 20th and 22nd. Uh, that will be online again this year. Uh, we were supposed to be part of the Verge uh, conference in the San Jose Convention Center with uh, 15,000 people. But even as of this date, uh, that is not going to, that's not going to happen. But we do it online and, uh, and it's still quite effective. Um, we, do, we do charge a program fee to go through the program. And for that, there's a two-day uh, National Academy, the 12 weeks of acceleration, uh, two days of regional showcasing, and then a two to three-day global forum. And so, you know, we call it for the entrepreneurs to have skin in the game. We want entrepreneurs to take it seriously. The truth is it costs us a lot more than the, than the program fee to, 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 to run a, a company through. And we make that up with uh, sponsorship. Here I, here's uh, some of our sponsors, uh, just the ones in California. Wells Fargo is our national sponsor. Um, we've worked and we, get, we have gotten a recent support, continue to get from Blue Tech Valley, Energize California, as well as other corporate, uh, corporate sponsors. And for that, we're, we're very grateful. So that's my last uh, slide. If you're an entrepreneur, please reach out to me or you can go directly to the application uh, bit.ly there. And, and I know Thomas is gonna make this uh, presentation available so it's all clickable. Uh, and if you're interested to get involved as a mentor or an investor or sponsor, and I don't mean to cannibalize anything from Clean Start, but if uh, someone is interested to work in depth with uh, companies over, over a 12 week period, we would love to have uh, the, the, assi the assistance and participation of the mentors. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing, open it, to, uh, open it to questions. Well, congratulations, Ken, on, on building the organization up. I know it's, it's been sort of a circuitous path for the past 15 years, um, but, uh, Tremendous success in building this thing up. I was glad to see in one of your slides that Dura Technologies, which actually started here, um, then he moved to Berkeley, um, and you know has just been a um, an excellent case of, of of bootstrapping and building yourself up slowly. But it's good to see that Adura is still going on, and of course we 
appreciate what uh, the Clean Tech Open has done to open opportunities here for, for companies in our area. I so, think, I mean, if I, Jerry, if I interrupt, I think one of the things I've, le I've learned over the last couple of years is it used to be if you were an entrepreneur, you would move to Silicon Valley. Just right. like if you're an actor you or you want to be on the stage, you move to Broadway in New York. That's not, I don't think that's necessary anymore. And we've adjusted our um, training materials and kind of our emphasis with entrepreneurs is you, you can be really successful where you are. Now, you know, there, there may be reasons that you have to move or something like that, but but um, where things are done on Zoom, investors now more and more are interested to work with companies and they don't require them to move to, to next to Sand Hill Road in Silicon Valley. And I think that bodes well for more entrepreneurs around the country to become successful. Oh, I agree. I mean, we've obviously taken our programs totally online now. You know, it's, it's more fun if everybody's in the same room, but it overcomes such a geographic barrier uh, and a time barrier um, that it's worth it. Um, and it's great to see that, that your programs are available online too. Um, and it does make a big difference. So at any rate, uh, let's open it up to any questions or discussions from others here. Um, so um, we've got the 18th, April 18th application deadline, everybody should be aware of. Um, and it, you know, it cycles every year. So if you're not ready this year, do some of the things here locally hmm. that Clean Start and others offer um, to get prepared and and be able to take better advantage of what CTO offers. But uh, other questions and uh, points uh, that people want to make. So if you you can say something in chat if you have a question um, or just unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. So Waverly, you've got to be ready to go on this, right? You've probably got 10 ideas ready to, to take forward in CTO. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm one of those people though that I haven't, gotten started in anything in clean tech yet. And so uh, I would be work, I would be interested in like a sort of a pilot sort of program or something to- Yeah, um, well, when, and we'll work from. with you on that here locally. Yeah. But, you know, if, if, and if you're going to seriously spend, you know, $1,300, um, right. take advantage of all the free stuff here uh, that gets you going. Uh, excuse me, I had a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, I was wondering, through all your experience running the Clean Start and all these uh, initiatives, have you found that there's like a specific type of business in the Clean Start area that's like preferred among investors and consumers? One that makes money. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ken, well, you want to give your first thoughts kind of on that? Sure. Yeah, you know, so... So I'm, I'm actually a VC myself. I co-run a, a venture fund in Los Angeles with about 40 investments. And I'm also a member of the Pasadena Angels Angel Group. So I have a lot of experience, you know, evaluating companies. And um, I think, you know, what's, it actually doesn't matter what the actual model is or what your technology is. Most, er, most investors are, are interested to know um, what kind of traction do you have and what kind of evidence do you have that your technology is going to be viable and that there's a market for it um, when it when it actually comes to market. So that's what we do in Clean Tech Open. Like we don't try to go in and test like do the physics work on, on your invention. It's more like how do you go out and get validation? It could be from universities near you or other research or the national testing labs or kind of other others. But typically, the investors want to see evidence of uh, that that your technology will work and that there's a market uh, for it. And you do that by building evidence uh, from customer discovery, technical validation, things like that. Yeah, I mean, we have some good connections to help people use uh, CalSeed 
Mm. So the, you can go both for the uh, concept awards of which there are about 28 uh, given out each year. And last year, I think there were 300 applicants. Um, but uh, that gives you a $150,000 grant. It's not equity. You don't have to, and it's not a loan. You don't have to pay anybody back and you don't lose any ownership in your company. That's very good. And there's also the Cal test bed vouchers where you can get um, any prototypes that you have tested and the results validated through various uh, labs at universities in California. So, which Cal test bed is open. Cal test bed is open. So if you're looking at that, go and check out Cal test bed. Yeah. So, I mean, there are, there are things to get the evidence put together before you do enter into CTO and certainly before you talk to investors. Um, so that it, it's great in California that we've begun to, to get this ladder of available uh, funding um, to take you through some of the toughest steps to get money for those very early ones when you're struggling to prove that your idea works. One thing I want to highlight that um, Ken had said, and I know Gary says all the uh, time, is there's a, um, a lean business model canvas and a uh, value proposition canvas and a um, professor out of Stanford name, uh, named, why am I Steve blank? Blank. Yeah, Steve, Steve blank. blank. I was going to say Ken Blank and just mash your guys' names together. But of Steve Blank, where it's about getting out of the office and getting that traction and finding out what uh, what people will actually pay for. Because what ends up destroying, mo or what it, most companies end, because they cannot find a customer willing to pay their product. And you're not going to figure that out until you go out there and really sit down and find that got to have it from a customer and keep going through basically just like a scientific process of hypothesize, test, hypothesize, test. Um, so it's good to hear that, you know, Ken mentioned that the clean tech open revolves around it. I think uh, one of the companies that went through the clean tech open uh, repurpose went through, Ken, uh, went through Steve Blank's pro, uh, mentor process too. Yeah, they, they, they were one of the NSF i companies yeah. that, that's based on Steve Blank stuff. And um, there's no, you know, there's no secret bullet. You just have to go out there and put in the legwork mm -hmm. and contact a, th a thousand people, talk to a hundred and get good information from five. <laughs> that's Steve, that's Steve Blank doing. used to uh, speak at Clean Tech Open events uh, and teach the uh, business model canvas. And then he became too famous and too expensive. <laughs> so, but we, we still use the, uh, we still use the methodology. Mm -hmm. his, well, his business model worked. Yeah. Um, and, so hopefully okay, that answers your question. I want to, um, I want to put in a, um, you know, Gary mentioned, you, you mentioned CalSeed. And um, so we are, a, we're a contracted partner with CalSeed. So all of those, all the companies, the 28 that you mentioned that get the, uh, the, uh, the initial award, 150,000, they are all offered and required to go through CleanTech Open in order to qualify for the $450,000 prototype awards. And so any company going through CalSeed will automatically then go through CleanTech, uh, CleanTech Open. Right, right. So it's a good association there, obviously. And I, I would say that um, by the rules that have been established, 25% uh, of the companies that get funded every year through CalSeed do come from the Central Valley region, Northern California region. Um, so if you're in this area and, and you have a reasonably good idea and you put some work in to, to really refine it, you got a pretty good chance. Um, so of the 300 applications that are made, certainly not 25% of them come from Northern California, Central Valley. So um, your chances are pretty good at being selected. Um, and that's a good start. Um, Ken, uh, thank you so much for all the information. It's great. We, uh, I work for Whisper Energy Systems and we just came out of the CalSeed cohort um, and or moving into the Clean Tech Open, but I'm relatively new to the team. So I thought I'd come here and get a little bit more information about Clean Tech and meet you guys. Um, so thank you for all that you're doing. I was wondering, you know, if before we uh, start this process, if there is anything that you can give me advice that I could have prepared that would make it more advantageous or that we could get more out of the program um, just going into it. Wow, that's a that's a really thinking ahead um, and very impressive. 
Actually, you'll, you will be, you'll be well prepared by the CalSeed people in terms of what you should have in advance. Um, for CalSeed companies, they still go through our application process online. You just don't have to pay the, the fee and because you get a special code. But um, in that uh, application, you'll tell us kind of what, what's the state of your business, what are kind of some of the challenges you see, things like that. And we use that to match you to the most appropriate mentors and, and also to kind of help tailor the curriculum to your needs uh, as you go through the program. So the, the most important thing is just be honest about where your, where your company is, is at right now. There's sometimes there's a tendency for entrepreneurs to kind of overpromise uh, how they're doing and things like that. We, we would rather you be brutally honest because then we know what to work with. And, um, but um, if you're going to do any kind of advanced work, I would read, uh, you could read up on the business model canvas and customer discovery from Steve Blank. There's a, there's a number of, I don't know, I, I don't have it within arm's reach, but uh, there, there's a couple of the books that they, that's both Steve Blank and Eric Reese have created, um, but that's not required uh, in yeah. advance. Uh, that's really helpful though. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Oh yeah. Sure. Thomas put the blog, uh, Steve Blank's blog. Uh, that, that's an excellent resource uh, tool to start with. He has Perfect. a whole Thank list you. of every single thing that he's got on supporting entrepreneurs in there. So it's a good thing. And I personally really also recommend his books because he goes into more, I guess, kind of case study likes uh, scenarios on why it's important to talk to the customer and where that has failed in, in organizations, yeah. which um, as simple as I make it sound, just get out there and talk to people. There's some nuance of, you know, how do you do it and what mistakes were made. Um, the example I always used to like to give is if you, if you make a piece of art and you go show your mom um, and she says, oh my God, it's amazing. Does that mean you're a good artist? No, <laughs> <laughs> it means your mom likes your artwork, which is good, you know, yeah. but okay. um, you have to be careful of bias and how you ask yeah, the question and who you ask. Do um, you have any other questions out there? Steve Blank's stuff is available on a website called Udacity, U-D-A-C-I-T-Y.com. Um, and I was turning around looking for his book. I think it's called the, the Startup Handbook or something like that. You can find it on Amazon. I, I, I have it in my office uh, somewhere here. Yeah, right. I've got too many books on my bookshelf back there. So. Uh, the, um, but our instructors that do teach uh, customer discovery and the business model of Canvas are actually also NSF i instructors. And I'm an adjunct instructor for, for the i program, which is kind of where I saw the light and learned about that, the methodology. And um, it's really, really effective for innovation, early stage innovation companies where you, you might have a really cool technology, but you're not quite sure who's, who would really want to buy it and what value do they place in it. Right. Uh, so, yeah, after doing, I think half a dozen startups, um, when I discovered this and then took uh, repurpose energy, I was the mentor for them through the i It's sort of like, I sure wish people would have told me this 10 years ago. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Save a lot of pain. All right. Other questions or comments? Well, Thomas, um, this has been a productive session, so uh really like getting this information out i've scribbled many notes on this so ken and your team thanks for joining us this morning let's give them a round of applause for the information uh thank and, you uh, very much really great um fun fact though about uh steve blank's books that if you sing them in reverse it's actually rob zombie um <laughs> and okay <laughs> And with that, I want to thank you all for attending. Stay connected and engage with us online. Come join our other perspectives. If you're looking at getting entrepreneurial support, uh, Cameron Law from the Carlson Center will share a lot of resources and what the work they're doing on it. Um, and if you're interested in the circular economy, cradle to cradle and upcycling uh, things into art, come listen to Shira Lane of Upkindness and join our clean tech meetup on the future, well, the future of mobility. Later this month, additional state thanks to our overall program sponsors, Hacker Lab, Momentum, Reverent, and GT Law, and the rest of our community of partners. Thank you guys very much for attending. And I'm going to be ending the recording right here. Goodbye, everyone.
Thank you, okay. Thomas. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, absolutely. Great partnership with CTO. Thanks so much, Ken. I hope to see you in person soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, wish so too. I'm, I'm hopeful that now that we have our first shots, um, pretty soon it'll it'll be everybody, and yeah. then maybe we can see people again. I, I normally am in the Bay Area about every every four to five weeks. Um, my son lives up in Redwood City, and my sister lives in Portola Valley. And uh, I often make uh, loops around, so I would love to come by Sacramento at some point. Uh, Keep me on the out. list, Ken. Yeah, we're glad to see you again. Thank you.